Hey, what's up guys, it's Josh, and in this video, I'm gonna show you a glimpse into my family business and how we recently closed a $12,000 deal right off the MLS with no marketing cost. All right, so this was uh, two weeks from today, actually from tomorrow, but I'm dropping this video last night. Anyway, um, and my sales manager comes into my office and he's looking at a lead that we got from cold calling on steroids. Link down in the comments if you wanna get lots of leads for cheap and hack this whole business. And uh, he said, Josh, you gotta take a look at this deal. I was comping this lead and I saw this property that just hit the market on the MLS today and it looks like it's a steal. And so I pulled up the property, I looked at the comparables and I said, holy smokes, this property is going for a ridiculous amount less than it's worth. Let's see if we can scoop it before all the other investors get to it. Now I knew that they were gonna have multiple offers and probably it was gonna go under contract within 24 hours. So I called the realtor right away. Now this is a big tip guys, don't be just submitting blind offers. This is a people business and you wanna use tone and voice and create urgency with whoever it is that you're gonna close the deal with, whether that be the seller or in this case, a realtor. So I call the realtor and I get a hold of her and I say, oh, I'm really excited, I'm hoping we can do something. We just sold one of our properties and I saw your property in Robson, which is an area we're very familiar in. And if you would schedule through showing time, please. Okay. Um, there's about 16 showings going on today. When are you reviewing offers? Is there any chance um, we could get a quick response? We could do, like, it'd be all cash. We can do a seven-day close. If the seller has any special requests, we're pretty flexible. Secret, we didn't actually go to the house. <laughs> Um, but we set the appointment as if we were going to. I called later that night. I had the offer ready to go. I said, we've done our due diligence. I have submitted the offer. Please let me know right away. Now, I submitted this offer and at the very end of this deal, I'm gonna show you exactly what it is I told her to get this deal approved. But for right now, I'm gonna walk you through a little bit of the rest of the deal. Here I am where the movie started, facing at a photo they've taken. Space tree flying through the skies and battles happen everywhere. Deal. So we got the deal. Fast forward. The next day is Saturday. We got a few day inspection period. More on the terms later. And I went over to the property with my son. Good job, Bubba. Bubba crushed the drone footage. And because it was Saturday and he helped me take pictures and it was awesome and this was right before the whole coronavirus freak out where you couldn't be out in public. In fact, in this beautiful historic neighborhood, there was neighbors outside. They were asking us if we just bought the house and if we were gonna move in or flip it or what we were gonna do with it. Are you guys the new owners? Yeah, we're not moving in though. Are you just flipping it? Yeah, probably. Flipping it or renting it, we're not sure. What's that? No, it needs grass. This neighborhood's so beautiful. Yeah. Well, nice to meet you all. What? And I got my son jumping on my back and doing dancing in the backyard because he's excited. Um, because I have my son set goals. How many deals are you going to help daddy sell? And when he hits his goals, I give him some kind of little reward. And so he's out there with me. It's a blast. And we take the pictures and we send it out. And here's where it gets really exciting, guys. So Saturday, Friday, we get the deal. Well, Friday, we see the lead on the MLS. We scoop the deal, we get it under contract right away because speed and time always win in real estate. Saturday, we go get pictures. Sunday, I prep my email blast and I have it scheduled for Monday morning. And it's a good thing I did because at about 4.30 in the morning, I got woke up and my wife says, this baby is coming. And it was only about two hours and 15 minutes later and this baby was here. She was born at 648 last Monday morning and it was incredible. Now I didn't even remember, wasn't even thinking about that the property was about to go out in a few hours. And at 915 on the dot, my email blast went out to my cash buyers list of 18,000 buyers. Now if you need more cash buyers, click this video up here because I'm gonna show you how you can overnight get a cash buyers list on steroids which will completely 
revolution, revolutionize and put your whole dispositions on steroids for your business. If you wanna do virtual wholesaling or go into multiple markets, this is the way to do it. Or even if you're just getting started in your own one market, which is totally cool and I respect that. And I would actually, for most people, say that's what you should do first. This is the first step, get that dispositions list. Anyways, it goes out to my 18,000 buyers at 9.15. My baby is like two and a half hours old and I start getting some texts and emails and whatnot and I'm kind of like, kind of half looking at them, but I'm like enjoying the first two hours, right? It's where they take you um, and the mom from the delivery room into the first little room before they get you set up in the in your main stay room where you're gonna be for two or three or four days. And in this case, that got cut short because of the coronavirus, but I'll get to that in a minute. So I'm enjoying all this time and the outbreak starts to, the news starts to go crazy. It's Monday morning, last Monday morning, stock market's down like crazy. Everyone had started to freak out a little bit the week before, now it's really off the charts. And we're like, uh, we better go get big brother and sister because if we don't get them right now, we don't know if we're gonna let, if the hospital's gonna let visitors in today. So I rush home, I grab Bubba, who went with me to take the pictures. I grab my daughter, Isabel. They were so excited to see their new baby. Dad, Josh is actually crying. How come? Because I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> we get back to the hospital and we are just having an awesome time. Mom's there, I'm there, Isabel's there, Bubba's there, and little baby Francis is there. And it's amazing and I get a text that says, I want that property that you just sent out, please call me. And I said, okay, maybe this guy will call. Cause I'm not gonna sit there and like field buyers and try to sell them and respond to questions and is it available to show and all this crap, right? We just had a baby, but this guy wants to buy the deal. So I'm like, all right. So I step out into the hallway real quick. I say, here's the deal, like always, here's the deal. If you wanna buy the property, I can send you the assignment right now. All the terms are in there. Um, as you probably saw in the email blast, the price is net to seller, which means you're paying all the closing costs. He asked me how much earnest money we wanted. I said, that's also in the email, but it's $7,500. And the reason we did that, I'm gonna get to in a minute, happened to do with how we got the deal and I wanted to cover my rear end. But as a side note, now that the coronavirus is out, we're asking for $10,000 on every single deal. In fact, I ended up writing another deal one week ago, which was four days after all this happened, um, and it was 110 price point, and I sold it, and we ended up, we should be selling it for like 130 or 140, but the market's going crazy right now. Everybody's freaked out because of the coronavirus and the stock market crashing and inventory's rising, and we only got 120 for it, and I was like, this sucks, but I guess what an awesome business when you say this sucks and you're making $10,000 on a deal. Anyways, we required $10,000 earnest money even on that property that we're selling at 120. Why? Guys, crazy stuff's happening and you wanna make sure that if the deal doesn't close, you get paid. You don't wanna lock up a great deal with the seller and then have a buyer not be able to close and then the seller says screw it and you walk away with nothing. So you gotta get that cash in the hand, guys. Especially the bigger the profit, the more earnest money you need. But I, I recommend 10,000 minimum on every deal you're doing right now. Anyways, we, I told him $7,500. He said, great, send me over the assignment. We just sold the house, high five. Keep recording, yeah, Boom. All right, so daddy is executing it right now. Dad, tell on us what we Frank. had today. So this morning, it's a good thing I had this property sent to automatically send out this morning from last night because in the middle of the night, we got a little surprise. Bubba, why don't you go show everybody? And then we <laughs> sold this house right now afterwards. This is our baby, Francis. Isn't she adorable? The deal had went out at 9.15. On the dot at 10.45, the contract came in. And within like two hours, I had an earnest money receipt for $7,500 from the title company on the deal and it closed and it was awesome. All right guys, so how did I get this deal? Well, here's how I did it guys. When I called the realtor, first of all, I created urgency. I told her we just sold some properties, which is 100% real. We did, we actually just sold a couple of our rental properties last month. Um, we weren't planning on the market falling this month. So now I kind of look like a genius. We were just planning on doing 1031 transactions, tax-free and buying more rental properties, but it is what it is. 
And so I told her, you know, we're looking to buy more property and this looks like a great deal, exactly what we're looking for. So I, like I said, I scheduled the showing with the realtor and again, she had like 13 showings and this is like, it's been on the market for like literally hours. It says zero days on market when you look at the listing. And so we schedule a showing time. I tell my sales manager, I'm like, if you wanna go over there and snap a couple pictures, picks go for it i mean we can tell this is definitely a deal um and so here's what we do guys um he doesn't end up going over there but we let the showing time kind of go through so the realtor you know i'm hoping she doesn't ask did you actually go there or not rather we just waited an hour till after we showed she said she was going to be reviewing offers that night with the seller and offers were already starting to come in i said well we really want it so here's what i did guys the list price was 198 i knew that the retail value of this property as it sat was 235, 240, um, and that the ARV was somewhere in the 300s without even seeing it and really driving the neighborhood or anything else. So I knew there was a deal there. It's like a 1600 square foot house if you include the addition, the addition like a 1200 square foot house without it. So I know somebody can buy this used as a rental, somebody can buy this and flip it. It's in a gorgeous historic neighborhood and let's get it done. So here's what we do guys. I offered her full price and I said, we're going to credit our commission to you. If you want to keep it and make 6% on your listing or whatever it is you have it listed for, make the whole commission, you can. If you want to credit that to your seller, you can. It turns out when the deal closed, she did credit it all to her seller. So kudos for her. Awesome realtor. That was really nice of her. We also said, we will pay the seller's closing costs. So here's what happens, guys. We also say we're gonna do a three-day inspection, but in the contract, of course, we put business, so we have three business days. So it's executed on a Friday. We've still got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And remember, we sent this thing out Monday morning and it was sold Monday afternoon. So turns out we didn't need that, but we were protected. We told them we would do $7,500 earnest money that would be non-refundable after three days. So here's what happened. She texts me back a couple hours later and she says, Josh, I'm trying to respond to your offer. Um, got a couple questions. And so they basically had nothing to do with like negotiating. She was all in. It turns out like we had forgotten to put her license number on page nine. It was a clerical error. So we fixed that. She sends us over a counter offer, which basically said timeline of acceptance to be two hours past when we had sent it because we sent it and we were like, we really needed her, uh, to know an answer right away. And so she had to extend, line, extend the timeline for her seller to respond. We agreed to that and we got the deal for 198. So here's what's cool, guys. We got the deal for 198. The seller was actually netting not only 3% on top of the 198, which would be approximately 2048, 2049, whatever. You can pause this video and do the math if you want. Give the YouTube algorithm some love. While you're doing that, hit subscribe down there, hit the bell, and smash the like button on this video if you're getting something out of this. And, um, forgot where I was there. So we get the, we do $7,500 earnest money, a three business day inspection. We say we're crediting our commission and we'll pay the buyer's closing co cost. So our 198 offer is really kind of like we're paying 207, 208, depending on what title fees end up being. And the tenant responds to me after I sent her back the executed assignment. She says, awesome. Look forward to a great escrow and don't let me down. We got 10 offers, four of them were higher than yours. So why do you think she took our offer when she had four offers that were higher? Do you think maybe it had something to do with $7,500 earnest money? Which turns out was another reason we did $7,500 earnest money. Normally we always do five, and if it's over 400,000, we do 10. But on this one, since we did 7,500 with the seller, you're darn right we did 7,500 with the buyer to cover ourselves. So $7,500 deposit, three-day inspection. Now, this is a good offer for a seller because if we back out, they didn't lose much time. Most people are gonna do the standard 10-day inspection when it's on the MLS, and that's just way more time than you need to look at a house and inspect it. Um, all I really needed was time to go over there, take some really good pictures, and so I could get my email blast ready and sent out to my buyers and scope the neighborhood and look at the comp. So that's what we did. So guys, again, 
198, but we made it as if the seller's netting a lot more. Now, the realtor could have kept that extra 5,800 bucks, whatever it was for our 3% of the commission that we were crediting, but that still would have helped, probably meant she was gonna push our deal above the other ones because she was gonna make more money. Now, again, this realtor, kudos to her, did not do that. She gave it to the seller, but she still was able to show more money to the seller and let us beat out other offers in doing so. so let me recap, three day business day, inspection period, $7,500 earnest money, no commission, we're gonna pay your buyer's closing costs. We send this thing out, we get it locked up at 198, we send this thing out Monday morning at 210, and guess what guys, it's a wholesale deal. So we always have the buyer paying both sides of the closing costs, why wouldn't if we? Why wouldn't we use that to help get a better deal with the seller? Same way you do with off-market properties. And um, I told you guys already how we sold it. So it was awesome. So that's how we got it locked up, guys. It was easy, it was awesome. The deal just closed earlier this week. The tenant texts me. She's like, um, the keys in the lockbox, go ahead and grab it. I'll grab the lockbox tomorrow. The rest of the keys are inside. And I was like, she's like, thanks for the super easy transaction. That was amazing. And I was like, thank you for the super easy transaction. That was amazing. And I forwarded that text to the guy that I assigned the deal to. So guys, if you want to learn how to do more wholesale deals, most of our deals do not come from the MLS. Now we do do a couple deals a month, typically from the MLS. We also do a couple deals a month from other wholesalers, but majority of our deals come from direct marketing. We do some direct mail, some Google pay-per-click, and a whole lot of cold calling on steroids, which is the best marketing source ever that you can get scalable leads for instantly all the time for super cheap so check that out and check out the next video and again make sure that you smash that like button make sure that you subscribe hit the bell for notifications so i can share more deals with you guys and more wholesale tips and if you haven't already leave a comment and let me know if you've done a deal lately if you're gonna do a deal soon if you're just getting started in this business what market you're in how you think the coronavirus is gonna affect the real estate market, how you're seeing the coronavirus virus affect the real estate market, and if you still don't leave a comment, shame on you, because I just gave you like 12 different things you could easily leave a comment about, which will give me the opportunity to comment back to you and talk to you, and if you have any questions, I'll also answer those. Peace out and crush city.